Flawedcast episode 188, The Good I Do See. Every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. Martin Luther King Jr. Flawedcast, get in the arena. Right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, every single one of you guys who are tuning in, who are listening. Uh, I want to thank and welcome all of our esteemed Flawedcast listeners back. Thank you for tuning in for another week. Uh, I'm riding solo again. Uh, Carl is having some issues with his back, so uh, please, if you are the praying kind, please keep him in your prayer. Uh, but you're going to suffer with me this week, and but I'm excited because I really feel like God spoke something in my heart, and I'm going to share it with you here. So let's just get into the shake and howdy, and then I'll, I'll get into it. I want this to be a really brief episode. So uh, please share, asking you guys to share these episodes. Uh, you can find us anywhere podcasts are available. Uh, just type in Flawedcast CLE. We're on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, Breaker, Anchor.fm. You can also find us on the video platform Rumble. Uh, that's under Flawed Inc. You can find us on the Project Mockingbird social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are also on Getter and Gab. All under Flawed Inc. In the description of this episode, there is a link to my author page on Amazon where you can get a copy of my book, Smith's Heart of Man Repair Manual. Uh, please pick one up if you haven't already. Uh, you can also email us at flawedinccle at gmail.com with any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, and I'll make sure Carl gets each and every one of them. <laughs> so, uh, nonetheless, want to get into this, and I, I'm, admittedly, uh, when I found out that Carl wasn't going to be able to make it this week, I'm like, oh man, I don't have anything prepared. And then God really spoke something to my heart. And for all those who may be wondering, how do I know if God speaks to me? You just, A, you got to listen, but B, what I've found is if it's something outside my normal pattern, like if it's just kind of like, oh, okay, I guess, yeah, that, okay. Usually that that still small voice is God. And the reason I titled this episode, The Good That I Do See, is because really what I felt like God dropped in my heart is there are some good things that I do see happening and that he is pointing out to me is probably a more accurate way to word it. And usually don't talk about those things, especially on this podcast. I'm more of a cup half empty kind of a guy, generally speaking, but I do really want to take a moment and speak on a scriptural level about a couple things that have happened in the last week or so that even though I don't know these individuals, they're, they're people that I've listened to and have taken a lot of their teachings and just really have impacted me. And I want to share these things with you. And the first one is a gentleman, he's an Australian minister, and I'm going to read this article. It's entitled Stabbing of Bishop at Sydney Church, a quote unquote terrorist act, police say. And this is from... um. CNN, April 16th, 2024. Uh, this is from Sydney, uh, CNN. I guess the lies go down there too. A bishop and a priest were stabbed in an alleged terrorist attack at a Sydney church that sparked a riot on Monday, police said. Just two days after the Australian city was rocked by a mass stabbing in a busy shopping mall. Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel was presiding over a service that was being live streamed at Christ the Good Shepherd Church in the western suburb of Wakeley. And this, this happened in Australia. Uh, so this didn't happen in America, but this guy has an international reach, uh, which is how I've heard of him. When an alleged attacker was seen charging toward him, several parishioners immediately attempted to intervene while screams could be heard in the church. Members of the public restrained the alleged attacker at the scene, according to New South Wales police. Police then arrived and arrested the suspect, later identified as a 16-year-old boy who was taken to the hospital under custody and received surgery for injuries sustained during the attack. NSW Police Commissioner Karen Webb told reporters Tuesday that the police believe 
the attack was premeditated. We will allege the suspect attended the church armed with the knife and stabbed the bishop and priest. We believe there are elements that are satisfied in terms of religious motivated extremism, she said. A 53-year-old man received cuts to his head and a 39-year-old man was injured after attempting to intervene, suffered cuts and a shoulder wound, police said. Both were treated by paramedics and taken to the hospital. Those are people who are trying to stop, not the alleged attacker. This was live stream. You can watch it. It, it. He stabbed him right in the face, right when he was preaching his sermon. They are lucky to be alive, Webb said. In a statement, Christ the Good Shepherd Church said Bishop Emmanuel suffered several blows to the head and body. Parish priest Father Isaac Royville was also injured, but no one else inside the church was harmed, he said. Charbel Shalab, deputy mayor of Fairfield City, a suburb of Western Sydney, told CNN that Emmanuel was well known in the local community. While the bishop was bleeding, he put his hand on the man that stabbed him and said something like, may the Lord Jesus save you. And this is a little old, uh, and I found some information last night. What happened is that this gentleman who's a Muslim didn't like what Bishop Emmanuel has been preaching. And you can find this guy all over. He, he, he's easy to recognize. He wears like this hood and this robe. Uh, he's a very recognizable figure, elderly gentleman. And his messages are normally spot on and very convicting. And like I said, I don't know how they can say alleged, although this must be an older article, but the good that I saw is in this clip that I'm about to play for you. And this was uh, Bishop Emmanuel's return back to the pulpit after uh, this attack. And I'm going to, it's just a real brief clip. I'm going to play it for you right here because I want you to hear in his own words what he said. So here we go. First Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. This is our Christian faith. But above all, this is our Christ, who is all love and always taught to love one another. Because God is love and the Lord Jesus, He is God revealed in the flesh, period. He taught us to love everyone without any differentiation. This will never change. For as long as Christ lives in our hearts, this will never change. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This young man who did this act almost two weeks ago, I say to you, my dear, you are my son. And you will always be my son. I will always pray for you. I'll always wish you nothing but the best. I pray that my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to enlighten your heart, enlighten your soul, your entire beating, to realize, my dear, there is only one God who art in heaven, the creator of all mankind and everything else that is visible and invisible and I say with absolute love confidence and humility that God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth but you are my son my dear and the Lord knows it is coming from the bottom of my heart I'll always pray for you and for whoever was behind this act in the name of my Jesus I forgive you I love you and I will always pray for you. For me, it's a, a priceless gift that I am not worthy of. I pray the Lord accepts it. Okay, so that was Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel's uh, return to the pulpit. Um, and I'm so humbled and I'm so taken back by this gentleman's response. And to be frank, I don't know that I would respond to an attacker calling him my son and the overwhelming willingness to just forgive him. Um, and then to even just say that, you know, I'm always here for you and, and just, just, it is complete representation of how we as Christians need to live our faith and, and be practical about it. And like, I, this is so good to see. And, and since that time, what we have learned 
is that now Bishop Emmanuel is going to be permanently blind in his right eye. So listening to that statement and now knowing that this bishop is going to be blind, well, for the rest of his life, unless God performs a miracle, which God could, it's so good for me to see an actual example of a leader in the Church of Christ living out what we need to as far as our faith commands. It's not a sign of weakness. I believe it's a sign of strength. I think back to the movie Desperado with uh, Antonio Banderas, and, and he's teaching that little dude how to play uh, mariachi guitar, you know, and he goes, it's, it's much easier to destroy than to create. He said, it's easier to pull the trigger than to play guitar. And it is easier in our flesh to lash out and to avenge. And those scriptures, God plainly tells us that vengeance is his, that we are to have no partaking of that. And the humility and the, it, it, this is one of the closest examples I've ever seen to somebody literally walking out their faith in accuracy and excellency in the manner in which we are commanded as Christians and what the scriptures dictate. And I, I'm just so humbled by this. I, I, I you know, I want to, I want to share a couple of scriptures here that came to my mind uh, as I was reading this. And the first one is Matthew chapter six, verses 14 and 15 from the Amplified. It says, for if you forgive others, their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, nurturing your hurt and anger with the result that it interferes with your relationship with God, then your father will not forgive your trespasses. Uh, I'm also going to share here uh, Matthew 18 verses 21 and 22. Once again, from the Amplified, it says, then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how many times will my brother sin against me and I forgive him and let it go up to seven times? And this, this is where I feel like Bishop Emmanuel is walking on his faith. Jesus answered him, I say to you, not up to seven times, but 70 times seven. There is no cap. There's no limit on, on the amount we are to forgive one another. And it does my heart good for a change to see a man of God walk out his faith, walk out his principles and what he preaches in a practical way. And it's tragic that this has happened. It's tragic that extreme hate in the world caused a man, while another man was preaching, to walk up and stab him in the face to, to you know permanently make him blind. The irony of it is, and not to get into much of a geopolitical jag, but this is in Australia where they don't have guns. They, they've lost the right to own and bear guns, uh, to own and bear weapons, and predominantly. And there was a protest the day before because there was a mass stabbing. And now this gentleman was stabbed in the face. There was another priest that was injured as well from a stabbing, which just goes to show, and, and it to me reinforces how powerful Bishop Emmanuel's demonstration is, is that evil is in the heart's of men and women. It does not matter the tool in which the evil is used to perpetrate, whether it be a, an atomic bomb, whether it be a knife, whether it be a gun, whether it be a stick, whether it be a stone like Cain and Abel. Evil in the heart of a man or woman will find whatever it needs to obtain its objectives. However, we are not to overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. And it, it warms my heart. It, it, it re-emphasizes and gives my faith strength to see Bishop Emmanuel walk this out. And this is one of the good things I've seen in the last week or so. Once again, tragic outcome. Uh, you know, we pray for that Muslim, young Muslim man that he find the light, he find the way, the, the truth and the life in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. But the fact that the, you know Bishop has so wonderfully extended forgiveness and not just forgiveness called him his son, you know a pledge that it, it, that whatever he could do he would do for him, uh, and that he's always welcome and and it is just 
it is antithetical to how I, I know I would probably behave. And I believe most people would behave. And I believe this is an example of something that Christ is putting in our path that we need to look from. We need to be astute and discerning and saying, there is good. There are people walking out their faith in a practical way. And, and I, I admire Bishop Mar, Mari Emanuel, and, and I, I pray for him. Godspeed, a full recovery and, and no loss of sight. And, and I'll, I'll pray at the end of this episode like we try to do. But the next thing I'm going to get into is going to be very controversial. I've already gotten on arguments on Facebook with people, and it, it boggles my mind that the church of the living God of the church of Jesus Christ is in such a disarray. And, and one of the things that God spoke to me after this initially happened is like, now we are seeing the separation of the wheat and the chaff. So it's important to take note of this, but this is regarding the episode at James River Church with the Stronger Men Conference. That pastor, James Lindell, who I, I, I believe the Assemblies of God Church need to really take a look at this man, really take a look at the practice of this church and deal accordingly in a scriptural and loving manner with this gentleman, but, uh, and Mark Driscoll. And I'm going to read briefly. It says, Driscoll Lindell controversy from afar. What started as a skirmish at Stronger Men's Conference has turned into a public spectacle. And this is an article from April 25th of this year. It says, the Stronger Men's Conference was sponsored by James Lindell's James River Church in Springfield, Missouri, and held at the Great Southern Bank Arena from April 11th to 13th. Mark Driscoll was slated as a feature speaker. On opening night, two-time Guinness World Record holder Alex Magala entertained the crowd by swallowing a sword before ascending and rapidly descending a large vertical pole. The next day, Driscoll paused his sermon to compare Magala's performance to Old Testament pagan idol worship and liken Magala's act to a female exotic dancer, calling it the spirit of Jezebel. Lindell blasted Driscoll for not following the biblical protocol for correction laid out in Matthew 18, saying if he had a problem with the entertainment, Driscoll should have spoken to him privately. Lindell appeared for 30 minutes, re-emerging on stage alongside Driscoll, where the two men appeared to display forgiveness and solidarity. And I, I, you know, I'm not going to really get into what has happened since then, although there is precedence that this pastor, uh, James Lindell and the James River Church, uh, foster a spirit of uh, misleading people. I'll say that to be polite, uh, that worked with Bill Johnson and the Bethel Church and uh, previous conferences where just bold-faced, unsubstantiated lies occurred. Uh, and like I said, uh, as attending an Assembly of God church now, I, I would call on the Assemblies of God to biblically investigate what is going on and, and why this man is allowed to remain in the position that he's in. But removing all that, stating all that, I'm going to play the clip of what Mark Driscoll said. And once again, to me, this, uh, the, I'm talking about the good that I'm seeing, the good that God is showing me. So I'm going to play this clip. This is what actually happened. And the, the article didn't really get into it, but this guy, he got up there, he was dressed in leather. It, it looked like, like some kind of magic mic thing. And he rips his shirt off and is kind of dancing around. And, you know, I don't know why this was at a men's conference. Like early in the night, they had like monster trucks and boxing and this and that. You know, I guess it's more important for people to be entertained than actually be discipled. But I, I'm removing that aside because I, I, you know, I like being entertained. But this was uncalled for. This goes directly on the head of the leadership of this church. And I'm going to really leave that for another time. There's enough information. Just Google it or just look it up on YouTube. YouTube, you're going to find a lot of information, but I want to play the clip of what Mark Driscoll said right here. But let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. But let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you, and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our vent. 
This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Okay, so I'm not getting into the controversy or anything that's happened since. What I want to address is that a man of God and who's had his issues in the past, he was a part of Mars Hill, and you can look up that, and I'm not endorsing Mark Driscoll. I believe a lot of his teachings have relevancy and power, and a lot of his teachings have actually inspired me in, in a lot of the subject matter on this podcast. But the fact that this is a man of God who was a discernful enough to see what was happening was not in the spirit of Christ and have the boldness, have the stones to literally call it out and say, there was a high place. There was an ash rod there. And, and, and these are all things that were part of idol worship. Uh, we, we've talked before in, in the days of Jezebel and Ahab and, and um, Elijah the prophet's confrontation. I know we've talked about this in previous episodes, and this is what he called out. I think that is good. And I think not that there's disruption and that there's schisms and isms within the body of Christ. What I think is good is that we hopefully are entering a season where men are filled with the spirit of God are going to begin to call out public sin. And they're going to begin to bring to the forefront that these things that are happening are not in line with the scripture. I think this is an excellent thing. My hat's off to Mark Lindell about calling this out. Now, what I will say is I don't know why he kowtowed to come out later and apologize. Maybe it was to keep the peace. I don't know, but I believe he was scripturally in line. He approached the, if you've not seen the video, he approached the stage. He took off his hat. He got down on a knee and he approached it. I believe from a place of humility saying that once you heard, this is a rebuke of no one or nothing, but an observation. And I believe that he conducted himself when the leadership said, you're out of line, you're done. He said, thank you. I received that and uh, gathered his blood belongings and left the stage. He didn't make a scene. He didn't call out any particular individual. And, and I believe in my heart as having been a person who has spoken uh, at many churches throughout the country uh, years previously, you always respect the authority of the house. Even if that authority is wrong, that is not for you at that moment to say that there's, there's ways to address things. And, and that's for probably another episode, but I want to point out that at least at that moment, Mark Driscoll, I believe, filled with God's spirit, called out a sin, called out something that was not right, and that obviously leadership in that body and a lot of the people that were attending there probably had no idea. My hat's off to him for that. Now, anything that's happened afterwards, I'm not going to address. I'm, I'm not going to address the, the, the line, the back and forth, because to me, it's a... It hurts my heart. And, you know, coming from just a, a place of intimacy, it's like I've always believed God has called me to be a, a mouthpiece for him, to be a speaker and, and, and to travel and, and proclaim his truth. And just seeing so much bad, so much unbiblical, unscriptural things happening in this day, it just breaks my heart. And I want to celebrate, I want to bring to light, and I want to change things up a little bit and celebrate that. Before I move any further, uh, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. This is from James chapter 4, verse 10 from the Amplified. It says, humble yourself with an attitude of repentance and insignificance in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. He will lift you up. He will give you purpose. Luke chapter 14, verse 11, once again from the Amplified, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled before others. And he who habitually humbles himself, keeps a realistic self view will be exalted. 
Romans 12, verse 3, For by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has apportioned to each of degree of faith and to purpose designated for service. So I believe in that moment, Driscoll walked in humility, once again, taking a knee, removing his hat, saying, I'm not rebuking anyone or anything, but this is what happened. The spirit, a antichrist spirit, a spirit of Jezebel already opened this men conference and hopefully a time of repentance would have came, but the leadership of James River Church, uh, Pastor James Odell decided not to engage in um, biblical principles of repentance. But nonetheless, I want to take this episode and I want it to feed your spirit. I want it to feed your heart that if we're looking, if we're discerning, we can see that there is good. There are things that are good happening. There are things that are glorifying God, that are uh, people living a life according to the excellence of the teachings of the scripture. And I want to encourage you and encourage myself that Maybe it's not all gloom and doom. Maybe the world isn't going to hell as uh, in, in a totality of things. Maybe that there are glimpses of, of men uh, uh, who are filled with God's Spirit stepping up. And I want to encourage you, be one of those men. Be one of those examples. And I'm just going to, Lord, I just uh, lift up everyone listening. I ask that you fill them with your spirit and that you you excite them, you renew their purpose, uh, myself including. I just pray for a, a quick, complete, and speedy recovery of Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel. I ask that you would just intervene in his life, and I pray for this man that stabbed him. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come upon him and lead him into conviction and lead him into a real purposeful, life-giving, eternal life-giving relationship with you, Jesus. And I just lift up Mark Driscoll. I lift up James Lindell in this whole Stronger Men's Conference. I ask, God, that you would have the glory out of everything. I ask that you would continue to separate the wheat and the chaff. And I ask that you would lead us and you would speak to us what your heart and what your will is for every situation. And I thank you. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So a little different, hopefully a little more affirming and life-giving, but I I thank you guys for listening. I want to ask you to share. You can find us anywhere podcasts are under Flawedcast CLE. We're at Apple, Google Play, Breaker, Spotify, um, all under Flawedcast CLE. You can find us on the video platform Rumble under Flawed Inc. Uh, You can find us on the Project Mockingbird social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are on Getter and Gab all under flawed ink i ask that you would uh, pick up my book uh, in this episode there's a link to my author page on amazon smith's heart of man repair manual and our email is flawed ink cle at gmail.com uh and i just i pray as you're listening to this that the spirit of heaviness flees far from your heart and your mind in christ jesus Amen.